I always do that. <laughs> do you want me to start? Uh, nah. Okay. Hey guys, this is Dylan. And I'm Lydia. This is our first episode breakdown. We're gonna we're doing The Walking Dead right now. First time doing this type of thing. Uh, we're just kind of like we we usually have uh, pretty good conversations about things, and we're just kind of try to bring everybody in on that. So uh, as we figure this out and uh, make it better over time, we promise. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you just if you'll bear with us and stick with us and keep watching our YouTube channel, uh, Broken Pictures. We're thinking of a name, possibly like Broken Dead or something like that. Toss some names out in the comments. Let us know what you think. We'll hopefully eventually do this for all of the shows that we watch. So we watch Westworld, Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, all of that. And so hopefully we'll have a name for each mm -hmm. set of episodes that we do. So we're hoping yeah. this one could be like Broken Dead or something like that. Yep. Let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, the, the name of the episode is Mercy. So um, we're just gonna do like a five, 10 minute little video uh, talking about the themes of Mercy that we saw and how it ties in, where we think it's going. So what was, what was a couple of things you noticed in your notes? Well, I thought it was really interesting that it was just kind of repeating throughout the episode and little spots here and there. And even at the very end where Rick, um, he quotes what the guy who Carl ran into because mm -hmm. it was funny he said uh, I heard what he said well some of it and so he obviously picked on, up on that and yeah. that kind of stuck with him and I wonder if that guy's going to be a, a main character later on in the season and that's where he or even maybe a bad guy or something. I mean because yeah. you think about all of the times that uh, Carl or Rick has let someone live and they come back to, to have an effect uh -huh. on them, just like when Carl let the walker live, that eventually killed Dale, you know? Yeah. And mm -hmm. Daryl let Dwight live. Yeah. And, and all of those people that they've let live, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting to see, whereas Rick normally would never have let that happen, let alone scare him off to come in a later attack and just, like, just let him be and just, like, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mercy is, is kind of like a big deal in the apocalypse because, like you said, do you do you let somebody live? You, do you trust them? Right. Uh, how far do you go? And they've built so much over the years now, however long they've been in the apocalypse. We're not really sure. I think uh, uh, Gimple said, uh, uh, the showrunner said, that they leave it vague on purpose so that you don't you don't really get a timeline per se. Yeah, I mean, mercy's a big deal. You... you, you you let somebody live, they could stab you in the back. It'd be your worst enemy. It's or like if you show them mercy, will they show you mercy? Because in the apocalypse, where all morale is kind of just thrown out the window, you mm -hmm. can never tell yeah, if mercy you, will be shown to you. Yeah, you don't know if it's going to be a Glenn Rick situation where Rick is the best thing that ever happened to them. Right. Or if it's going to be a, uh, a Gregory yeah, situation. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, and that's an interesting time that I didn't really think about is Father Gabriel is like, he even says, like, shit before he goes out. And he, like, knows that this is a bad choice. But because he is that voice uh -huh. of reason right now, yeah. he can't let that by. You know, and he is yeah. the Glenn right now of whereas he's not going to let someone that he could possibly save mm -hmm. die knowing because he is, he does have that mercy and he wants, I kind of see it as, like, Glenn and, and definitely Father Gabriel want one day to, if they're answering to God, have him have mercy on them kind of situation. So, like, yeah. Yeah. they're not no going to answer. they're in apocalypse or not, whatever the situation. Right. So there was a lot of themes of mercy and religious iconography throughout it. Like the stained glass right. with Rick. When um, Daryl and them are setting up the bombs with the, with the trip wire, there's a statue of Mary, the scripture from the Quran. Right. Uh, of course, there's the sanctuary that they attacked. Hmm, I didn't really think about that. It is that is an interesting time that it is the mm -hmm. sanctuary. And I noticed uh, one and thing. And they're the saviors. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that. that yeah, I mean, that obviously ties in with Negan. That whole theme of mercy is just kind of like dug in like roots in every little piece of of everything. I mean, yeah, I mean, really, a big hat tip to the writers of how they've yeah. tied all this together. It's like. I can't imagine what their office looks like with the big strings <laughs> on the wall and the conspiracy theories and stuff. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, even I was noticing there's just, like, several instances of windows. 
and uh, windows are always a doorway and they're always and so they were talking about the future and where they're headed and tomorrow uh, I mean they shot out the windows of the saviors I mean that could represent they're ending their future their doorway to another place of course there was a stained glass window with a rig right there was the little um, time jump there we're not sure what's going on we can get into that later um, but uh, old man Rick yeah old man yeah how that all how we think all that ties together then there was uh, when when Gabriel Gabriel drove the RV. We I'm pretty sure that that's the the Dale Glenn RV. Yeah. That that was is is gone now. I'd be interested to see if they bring that up again later, like in yeah. the in the episodes, if if maybe Rick or even Carl says something about like yeah we've traveled so far in that RV. You know, it would be yeah. interesting to see if they bring that back up. Yeah, and on the Talking Dead, they gave it a memoriam just like one of the characters. So it's. How they, it's, it's probably the RV. When when Gabriel crawled out the back, he crawled out the window. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There was I'm checking over my notes here. And by the way, this is Ghost. He's obviously enjoying his nap time. <laughs> oh yeah, there was that was another one. Metaphorically, uh, when when Rick is shooting at Negan, and he's locked on, and he's he's trying to hit Negan through these windows, hmm. and uh. In these, in this thing, this metal thing that's collapsed or whatever. I took that as like that was the front, the mass that was on the front of the RV, and so it, like yeah, when it, it exploded, been. like it fell and like he hit. The oh, okay. Was yeah, what I was yeah. I could, I can figure out what it was, but either way, yeah. So there's when he's hiding, and like he can barely see like little body parts, legs and arms sticking out uh, of Negan, and Rick is trying to catch him through these windows, and and Gabriel Gabriel grabs him. He's like, this is our time to leave. This is our window to leave. So okay. then. Um, when Gabriel is leaving, he misses his window of opportunity and, and shows mercy to, uh, to Gregory, who then, they're, they're caught under fire and uh, looking for their window of opportunity to get out. And then Gregory, of course, takes his, his moment and, and steals the car. It would have been funny car. because when Gabriel, when Gabriel said, we've <clears throat> just got to wait for our time, it would have been interesting if mm -hmm. they had said, we've just got to wait for our window. Mm -hmm. That would have been interesting to hear. Yeah, and I think Gabriel is really uh, personifying mercy in at least this episode mm -hmm. because, in the, uh, like in the realm of morality, uh, Gabriel is the new Glenn. Mm -hmm. um, and that definitely puts almost like a target on his back, especially we just saw yeah. him captured by Negan. And it's, you never want to be yeah, the voice of yeah, reason. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to get into with uh, Gabriel represents hope in the new world. And uh, Rick respects and listens to him. But right now, Gabriel is in the at the mercy of Negan. I mean, as, as Gabriel represents their tomorrow, their hope for the future, they were always talking about throughout the entire episode, children and uh, future. And I mean, even yeah. Michonne telling Carl, this is your show. And, you know, with the flash forwards, Hopefully they're flash forward. They might they might be a dream sequence. We're not sure about that yet. And we'll get into that later where we discuss that further because mm -hmm. I'm more on the dream sequence side. So we'll talk yeah. about that again yeah. later. And if you've if you've read the comics, you know uh, about the. You know, of course, there's going to be spoilers during this thing. <laughs> so uh, just keep your, yeah alert. keep your ears on. Uh, uh, what was I about to say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're talking about um, oh the flash forward in yeah, the comics. Yeah. So we know about the, if you've ever read the comics, and I've read some of them, and I've kind of spoiled myself just standing in the bookstore flipping pages. Uh, and there's there's the time jump, and it I think it's like two years in the future. But with this, it looks a lot more. You were saying it looks that uh, Judith is a lot older than just a two year jump. Right, right. So whereas I it think was it huge, was huge by the way now. Yeah, right, uh, and so that was interesting on The Talking Dead. If you missed it, you should catch up, but on The Talking Dead, Scott M. Gimple corrected himself because when he said, talking about Glenn last year, and he said, well, the year before that, he corrected himself of, like, it's been so long even in that gap, you know, but what's interesting to me is that Judith is so big, and yet Maggie is not, <laughs> and so, like, yeah. they've time-jumped so much. It's supposed to be so long, but, yeah. like, Maggie mm -hmm. is, you can't yeah. even tell she's pregnant. She's still, what is it, she said, uh, going to war in their second trimester. Yeah, right, <laughs> waging war in, in the second trimester. Yeah. 
Um, but about the mercy thing, I think it's also interesting that you you mentioned the old man Rick thing and in the time jump in old man Rick in the comic, Negan, he captures Negan instead of killing him. And that's interesting to me because the whole episode, he's like, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to be mm -hmm. the kill, the one to kill him. Yeah. And then at the end, we see the sequence where, uh, or the scene where he's recalling what that guy said about having mercy. Um, yeah, from the Quran and with the stained glass. Right. And so it's almost as though like Rick has come to this realization of if I'm going to be the person... Mm -hmm. To want mercy, I have to lead mercy, you yeah, know, and yeah, so and he I'm, chooses not to kill Negan is what I feel like. Yeah, that that can definitely be that point, and and I'm not sure. Old man Rick was was limping with a cane, so maybe during sometime during this point he he has an injury. And we saw on the t on the teaser for next week's episode, it seemed as though when he was walking down the road, he was a limp, limping a little bit. But yeah, I feel we'll get into the old man Rick face. again mm -hmm. again later. Yeah, and um, so that scene could be where he's showing uh, uh, Negan mercy. Right. But the, uh, the, another overarching theme with the mercy future, because mercy seems to be like the new paradigm for the future versus the rictatorship of the past, and the entire time, the entire episode, they're 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 telling Rick, you know, you know, it's not about you. Right. Uh, he's telling Maggie, I'm gonna follow you from now on after this. And it's kind of like one big last hurrah before they, before they give up the rictatorship and move into something more peaceful and uh, try to build an actual society together. And a lot of times the thing that comes after war is, is peace, you know, and, and we're talking about even the, the season is, is called All Out War, mm -hmm. you know, and the best thing we could hope for to come afterward is peace. But how long does that last? And they're asking for mercy again. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, and um, you mentioned last night when we were talking about a little bit um, the whispers. And so, like, they keep Negan alive and he eventually helps them defeat the, the whispers and everything. But how long can you have mercy in the apocalypse? How long yeah. can, can mercy be your armor? Mm -hmm. And how long does that let you survive? Yeah, it raises a lot of questions. You know, I mean, that's one thing we love about this show is it, it really deals with a lot of things in society and just the big questions like what type of people are allowed to operate in society? And, right. you know, uh, in the world that, that Rick and Maggie and Ezekiel are build, building, uh, people like Negan aren't allowed to move into the future. Like there was a callback to Carol looking at the flowers. People like Lizzie uh, are not allowed in the in the new future, in the new merciful. It's like Old Testament, New Testament. You know, they're moving forward into a new paradigm of thinking and operating. And uh, uh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it was interesting to me that they. Obviously, we don't know what the owl represents or anything like that, but I thought yeah. I would love to get into that later because now that I think about it, um, I can't think of her name, but the girl that Rick almost got with that was in Alexandria, the sculpture oh. that she had built that got torn up was an owl. Oh, And okay. this future is an owl. I think that that's interesting that in Rick's head, he either subconsciously did that or it has some sort of weight bearing on that, but oh. an owl is such a, a symbol of wisdom mm -hmm. and mercy of just like... And government. And, and government and mm -hmm. all of this. And, and is mercy greater than wisdom in this world? Whereas like you either have mercy or you are wise and you don't yeah. have mercy of where's that balance? That area is <clears> such <throat> a gray area. Yeah, and I, I think... Uh, like, the whole time I'm watching Gregory, I'm thinking, this guy should have died a long time ago. And uh, so it's just another another uh, symbol of mercy where they've shown this guy mercy, and and he's kind of like the guy in between where you draw the line. It's like he's, he's at one point, I think he's going to cross the line because he's never really stepped over into just, like, malicious evil. He, oh, he's we always, almost saw him do that with the Maggie situation. Yeah, where he, yeah, but he didn't do it. He's he's considered it, but he's never crossed over. He's he's always been a selfish weasel, self-serving, and everything everything he does uh, is is out of the out of that place. That's just him <laughs> as a person, his personality as a character, and uh, so he's allowed to live. He's allowed to 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 roam and be in this world, but. As soon as he crosses that line, 
Then he crosses into the Negans and the Lizzies and right. the Savior's territory where... The governor. Those, yeah, the people that they will not allow to coexist. Right. You know? and, and that's interesting to me is because, like, the rictatorship or, you know, you brought that up a moment ago, just, like, who made Rick the chooser, you know? Just, like, they, they implemented the three-question system several mm -hmm. seasons back, but we haven't really seen that again of just, like, you're, you're talking about um, those people aren't allowed to live in this new future and this civilization. Well, if we look at it from the other side of just, like, in Negan's viewpoint, Rick doesn't get to live in this new world of mm -hmm. just like yeah, and they're, they're really fighting for that tomorrow that they talked about. Right. Who's tomorrow? It's gonna be. It it just makes me think of like who are all the people that we've seen in the season and the series throughout that have shown Rick mercy to get him to be able to be the person that gets to choose. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and Dale cut him some slack. Herschel, I mean, Herschel didn't have to. Fix yeah. Carl when Carl got shot. Yeah, you know, like let him have to stay at the at the farmhouse. Right. I mean, none of that had to happen, and Rick takes everything with that. So it's interesting to see all the callbacks to Herschel and Glenn, who are the people who have always shown mercy, mm -hmm. and and kind of relate that back. Yeah, and it's really had an impact on Carl. Uh, I mean, he was he was kind of. Uh, we saw him show given, mercy at the end where he brings right, canned yeah, food. Yeah, and he was given uh, his dad flack about, you know, it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough hope. So, I mean, he's really locked in, into a certain type of future. Right. And, uh, I mean, for somebody who's lived, all, I mean, basically all he knows is the apocalypse and that type of world, to choose that, I mean, that's a, that's a huge deal. Yeah, Absolutely. And especially from what he's seen of, he's just seen Rick all this time, you know, mm -hmm. and he could very well be another Rick and, and be exactly like him. And yeah, and he's, he's kind of walked the line sometimes, too. Um, he could even cross so far as to be a Spencer, you know, like so <laughs> selfish and self-serving. And, yeah. and so it's interesting to see that in this world and in the fatherhood that Rick has raised Carl in, he still finds that mercy, mm -hmm. you know, to give people more than hope, you know. Yeah. It, it's interesting to see that parallel. Yeah, yeah and there was, a, there was another uh, kind of literal hat tip to Rick passing the torch to Carl. When he put he put he took the hat off and hugged him and put his hat back on. I remember that was a big deal. I think it was season two where he gave him the hat, and it's always, he's been wearing it ever since. And he even told him, this is the end, you know. I mean, that's pre it's pretty spelled out, you know. Pretty on the nose. But I think that's more getting into the future than it is the, the mercy theme of just, like, that's them starting to lead the future and, like, hat tips mm -hmm. to the new Yeah, yeah, they're tired. They're ready to pass leaders. it on. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so... Uh, I think we've we've definitely gone past 10 minutes here we're, <laughs> we're almost at 20 minutes so uh like i said we're, we're getting better at this we're gonna get better at this uh so just give us cut us some flack show us some mercy <laughs> and, uh, so uh just over time we'll figure out you know different lighting what looks better uh different sound that sounds better i might and, brush uh, my hair <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> but uh so uh <clears throat> Uh, just be sure to like and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel to keep up with what's going on with this and, and kind of watch our progression and, and how we get better and how things go. And uh, again, this is uh, Dylan. And I'm Lydia. With Broken Pictures. And uh, we'll see you next time. I've got to get ready for work. <laughs>